Vegetables are high-value crops contributing significantly to the orientation of the Kenyan agriculture from subsistence to commercial production enterprises. Vegetables constitute an important component of people's diet and plays a major role in their nutritional balance. Currently, CAPAP uh, is undertaking research in six value chain, which include cereals, fruits, vegetables, uh, we have dairy, meat, aquaculture, and the cross-cutting area, which addresses natural resource management constraints across uh, the, the entire set of value chain. Uh, in this particular case, we are now looking at the vegetables value chain, and the most important aspect that has been considered in the vegetables value chain is the indigenous vegetables. Uh, the selection of indigenous vegetables was arrived at because uh, they are very critical in terms of the nutrition and food security. Kenya is endowed with a wide range of vegetables including indigenous, Asian and exotic vegetables. Indigenous green leafy vegetables have been gathered, planted and eaten by many communities around the world since prehistoric times. The African indigenous leafy vegetables have traditionally been consumed by communities in Africa for their nutritive and medicinal value. The vegetables are rich in proteins, minerals and vitamins. Further, they have remedial effects against various ailments including fevers, stomach disorders, ulcers, cancer and diabetes. They are also effective against some heart and skin diseases. Thus, the vegetables fill a crucial food and nutrition security gap in sub-Saharan Africa. Despite their attributes, limited research has been done on the crops to develop and establish their best production practices and utilization. Further, the introduction and promotion of exotic vegetables for commercial use in Kenya and the increasing food demand due to high rate of population growth, production of the indigenous vegetables has declined considerably. Increasing knowledge in the nutritive and medicinal value of the vegetables has rekindled research and consumer interest in the vegetables. Mboga hii yetu ya kiasili unapoipeleka kwa soko na kuna mtu pia amepeleka sukuma kwa soko nitakuhakikishia kwamba nitauza yangu kwanza iishe ndipo aanze kuuza yako. People have had this uh, um, attitude that uh, this having been just growing wild in most parts and you know traditionally people just harvested them from the wild people uh, got this attitude that it is uh, these uh, vegetables are kind of hunger foods which are only good for subsistence poor who use them during times of uh, scarcity so really knowing the goodness in this vegetable we want people to come to appreciate. In the current Kenyan or African context, they are becoming a crop that uh, everyone wants to eat. But what has generated that interest of people wanting to eat is the market that is making us want to work on this crop so that we produce for, for the market. Uh, one thing is that people are now going back to their, to their roots. These crops are very rich crops that people neglected. I would say there was the problem of cabbage and kale in Kenya that everybody thought if you eat cabbage, then you are more mainstream than other people. 
But if you analyze nutritional uh, aspects of, of cabbage and compare it with indigenous vegetables, there's nothing to compare really. And so people are now going back there because we want to eat natural. And so natural means indigenous. We are going back to these indigenous crops because that's where most of the nutritional security will be obtained. Vision 2030 recognizes the role of science, technology and innovation, STI, in a modern economy in which new knowledge plays a central role in wealth creation, social welfare and international competitiveness. The Kenya Agricultural Productivity and Agribusiness Project, KAPAP, developed a research project on the indigenous vegetables through collaboration by a consortium of researchers from different research institutions and the vegetable industry based on the value chain approach. KAPAP. Has come in. The approach emphasized public-private partnership. PPP and takes into account environmental, social and gender issues. The negative attitude about African indigenous vegetables has been an issue in I think the whole of Nyanza, but that thing, that negative attitude is what we want to, to change. If you go to Nairobi now, where, where I believe people are more enlightened, they are now running for these vegetables and even they are out now in the supermarkets. So in Nairobi if these vegetables are in the supermarkets, do we, are they really still a poor man's vegetable? No. The people eating these vegetables right now, in fact right now it is very expensive for somebody from the rural area to buy these vegetables in, in the urban centers. So that tells you something. And uh, so through the training that we are going to conduct, this is information I'm going to give you and so that you can compare. And that's now, through that, I think we'll be able to, uh, to see that actually these vegetables, they, do, they don't have that uh, that traditional African in it as compared to what you have said European vegetables, we call them exotic vegetables. They are also they are actually they are less superior as compared to African indigenous vegetables. But we are going to learn all this uh, in trainings as groups. The research is on enhancing production, value addition and marketing of indigenous vegetables, French beans and mushroom products among smallholder farmers in Kenya. We program Yakapap walianza kutusanya pamoja wa kutupatia au wakatupatia mwalimu kutoka kwa tatu waliweza kutufunza na kuweza kutupatia ujuzi ya kupanda mboga ha. zamani tulikuwa tunaweka tu surundu ile kidogo kidogo lakini saa hii tunakuta tunalima shamba kubwa tunaweka kamba tunaweka mbego na tunapalelea na tunaweka rekodi zetu ya pili uh, unakuta ukiwa na shamba ya mboga ile unachuna una unakuta uko na shamba ingine ambayo uh, ujaanza kuchuna ingine unakuta ndio umepanda ili tuweze kukuwa na production continuous production eh? mboga tunahakikisha tuna isikose since the uh, people came, I have got now more knowledge than I used to have. Because uh, I was shown how to plant it. And you know, in the, in the early times, I didn't know that it, was, it could be got in the shops. I was just collecting the local one. But when I, was, I brought this one here, the certified seeds, they became better than the local seeds. They are more leafy and they, are, they, they bring out more seeds than the, those ones. And again, they are resistant to some of these pests. Batalam. Kutoka ikato. Dr. Mulwa walikuja waka tufundisha. Kusema kweli, hii mboga ilikuwa kikuzwa kitamba. Na hatu kukua tumejua eo, vile tunaweza kuiweka kwa njia inayofa. Sasa tulikuwa tukichukua tu hiyo mbeku tunatupatupa tuna, tunatupatupa. Eh? Pengine inamea pengine haiwezi kumea na tulipo baadika kupata wataalam sasa tuna, tunaona kama kazi ni rahisi na tunakuwa na pesa kila saa the vegetables include cowpeas spider plant nightshade amaranth and pumpkin 
the research focuses on enhancing their production, value addition and utilization in niche markets through transformation of the vegetable subsector in Kenya into a commercially oriented industry for food and nutrition security, food safety and employment creation. The area ambayo tulilima ata hapa kukua pakubwa sana kitu kama a quarter an acre hivi lakini every three days tulikuwa tunakuja tunachuna mboga tukiwa sisi wote wanapeleka wanauza wakiuza tunapata 900 after three days ilienda hivyo for uh, six weeks ambapo tulitengeneza 27800 tulishukuru sana kwa mafundisho ya kutoka kule Egerton kwa sababu hawa liatukuwa tumejua tunaweza kupata mapato kama hiyo kutokana kwa mboga. Hii mboga ni menunua nae Kentuck. Wengine wa menunua nae mbusi, wengine wa menunua nae kondoo, wengine wanalipo nae school fees kidogo kidogo. Oh, hii mboga imetusaidia sana, sana sana kwa hii kikundi yetu. Tangu tuanze kupata mafunzo kutoka kwa program ya CAPAP, tumeweza kuanzisha table banking katika hii kikundi na tunaona kama sasa hivi pesa iko kila member akikuja na ako na pesa yake ya kuandika katika table banking na mtu anakuwa na share inasonga inasonga kwa inamaanisha kuwa mboga inaleta pesa kama mimi mwenyewe nili hizo 750 zenye nilipata kila mmoja wetu alikuwa akipata niliweka nikafanya bidii nikaongeza ongeza nikanunua kambuzi kako tena kako karibu kuzaa sai sasa hawa wanachama wa kikundi wakaona oh hii kitu inaweza kutusaidia the project brought together a consortium of scientists from various research institutions, among them Egerton University, EU, University of Nairobi, Jaramogi Odinga Oginga University of Science and Technology, Mount Kenya University, MKU, and national institutions including Kenya Industrial Research and Development Institute and National Museums of Kenya. Kenya Agricultural Productivity and Agribusiness Project is a government of Kenya project supported by the World Bank. The main objective of the project is to increase agricultural productivity and incomes of smallholder farmers within the project area. The project has four components. The first component looks at the issue of policy and institutional uh, management. The second component looks at the issues of agricultural research. The third component looks at agricultural extension and farmer empowerment. And the fourth component looks at uh, agribusiness and market development. So in the implementation of the project, all these components need to work together. And that is why the collaborative research project is, brings all the stakeholders together. It brings the farmers together, uh, the researchers, and the extension people, and even the industrialists, the agro-processors. One of the research that we are undertaking is to study uh, the insects that are associated with the amaranthus in the field. And our focus has been in the Uburi area of Meru. And uh, here we are working in uh, two locations, uh, Nichiroiboro and Ruiri. And um, we found that uh, there are certain weevils that are attacking the stems of the amaranth and also the leaves. And some of the 
larval stages of the weevils are tunneling the stem. And when the stem has many tunnels, when they swing, then they tend to fall. Uh, also, we have some uh, sucking bags that uh, suck the seeds of, of the amaranth crop. And uh, we are looking at them, we've collected the samples. And one of the activities that we are doing is identification of these uh, insects to species level. Because identification of pests is very important because you must know your enemy before you can attack them. The team identified seven major areas of intervention, including crop improvement, agronomic practices, crop protection, post-harvest handling, value addition, marketing, technology, and information communication. So here on station in Egerton, we are doing a few experiments on seed, on evaluation of various germplasm that we have picked from all over the country of this crop. We are also now engaging in microenvironment modification to see how that affects the productivity and the quality of, of, of this crop. To do this, we have engaged a few master students. We also have a post-master student who is also interested in the work. And the aim is to pick ecotypes that we can further do breeding with to develop varieties that we can name and then mainstream in the market for, for farmers to be, to be getting the material from us. Achievements have been made in germplasm collection, selection and evaluation, agronomic studies in particular, plant population, fertilizer and water use. This program highlights some of these achievements. The spider plant produces many leaves and is found in large numbers in most fields and gardens. Spider plant is generally considered a weed, plaguing maize and bean fields in Kenya and other countries. When you go outside, it's a weed, but for us, it's, it, we are developing it into a crop. So we've collected 36 ecotypes from all over the country. We are evaluating these ecotypes for their agronomy and productivity. Called Mwangani in Swahili, spider plant is highly nutritious and is well adapted to many African ecosystems. When you look at spider plant, when it grows and flowers, you cannot harvest any more vegetable from it. But we are feeling if we curtail the development of the vegetative phase, of, of the reproductive phase, we could actually extend the vegetative phase and be able to harvest more, more vegetable from this crop. So once you do that, you are also indirectly trying to enhance yields. And that is what the farmer wants. People are growing this crop for, for yields. That is the leaf yield. High in vitamins and micronutrients, spider plants contributes to a healthy diet for many rural Africans with limited food budgets. Tangu mama anza kunipike imba, hata mwili yangu imeanza kuja. Kwa hivyo ni mzuri. The plant is also high in protein and has more amino acids than groundnuts. High levels of antioxidants in the vegetable may help prevent diseases like diabetes, cancer and heart diseases. Now we are also developing through breeding milder types because the other thing that was uh, making people not eat these crops is that you get kids who are born in town, they don't want anything bitter and if everything they want must be sweet or nice. When you go to the village, the bitter, the better. Luckily in Kenya, black 